You are watching Finding Our Talk. Vous regardez parler pour survivre. Because of the nick and the fool. Chita Wark, the Uncle Wana. Langs and the Tennis Pile. Hi, and welcome to Finding Our Talk. I'm your host, Paul Chaput. For any language initiative to succeed, the support of the community and the elders is absolutely essential. Today we'll visit the Maliseet or Wolastuk peoples of New Brunswick and see how their community-based programs are attracting new learners. In Fredericton, New Brunswick, this bridge spans the St. John River. Across the bridge lies the Maliseet Reserve of St. Mary's First Nation. Along with the Pasmaquoddy, Abenaki, Penobscot, and Mi'kmaq, it is one of the five languages that form the Eastern Algonquin language group in the Atlantic provinces. But a growing number do not accept the name Maliseet. The word Maliseet it isn't even in our language. The word Malasi comes from the Mi'kmaq word Malazijik, and it means slow speakers. What we call ourselves that we have even forgotten is Wolastuk. Wolastuk Gawiyag are the people of this river. Imelda Purley is a resident at St. Mary's and one of a growing number of Wolastuk language speakers. We reconnected again when uh, I began teaching at St. Thomas University. She was a student at uh, uh, UNB. She was taking linguistics. I asked her what she was concentrating on, and she said Spanish and French. And I thought, it's such a shame that we need linguists within our language, even at the uh, master's level. I think those words sunk in. Imelda Purley is the first of her people to get a degree in linguistics and to study the Wolastuk language at the University of New Brunswick. As a linguist, as a person who carries the language, I want to see language in every phase, every realm of life in the community. While visiting New Zealand's Maori people, Imelda learned a lot about reversing language loss through the use of language nests. The Maoris really inspired me. The Maori had actually reversed language loss. So I started introducing apprenticeship programs, just like the Maori did. Their language wasn't just in the schools or in the homes. They also started taking it to nightclubs and, and everywhere that they went. All of the activities were within the language. So what I would do is they would learn the vocabulary and then we would actually go out and they would get to practice it in the pu in public, which is such a big, giant step for them. Tradition is an important vessel for language. Every activity starts with smudging, using a braid of sweet grass, also known as the mother's hair in the Wallastic tradition. When you bring the smoke, you ask a prayer for Creator for yourself. You ask Creator, may I think in my language. When you bring the smoke to your eyes, may I see other people by using the language. Your ear so that may I hear my language today. You know, the nose so that we smell the medicine, the wulimahask, sage, gokskoks, you know, all of that. When we bring the smoke to our mouth, may we speak our language today. When you bring it to your heart, may I carry my language with pride. You bless your hands so that may I greet other people in my language. And you bless your feet so that you may walk this red road to your language, your language journey, because all of you have a personal language journey. 
that next step, that big step, it's actually a big step that you're taking is going from the community and using it outside of the community. With you're taking your language wherever you go. If you decide you're going to go bowling, you're going to know how to say some things in at the bowling alley. Najig bumulane. Najig bumulane. That means you've knocked them all down in one shot. Guess what? Now Wet the hood. Wet the hood. Abzig because the pins are made of wood. And wood is the word abus. You know, abzig, so that's plural. Wet the hood, the ones you try to, th those pieces of wood you're trying to knock down. Yeah, quick Yeah. 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 Now this is when you're going to be advising your partners, you know, because Gyakwigmulan is roll it straight, like right down the middle. Gyakwigmulan let, lets your ball roll straight, okay? And so that's what you're saying, roll the ball straight. Valerie Brooks recently joined the growing ranks of Wolastuk language teachers. The methods uh, Melda has been teaching us, I've been passing on to uh, our students at the school, like working with the puppets, story time, dance. Speakers are going to be, might be your worst enemies right now, because they're going to be testing you. So, what are you learning in Malaseet, you know? Then you can say, I learned how to say, Nimji neu ahedwalaguk, you know? Nimji neu ahedwalaguk, you know? Uh, that means gutter. And, oh, I never knew there was a word for that. A good sense of humor goes a long way when learning the language. We have this word, if you have already met somebody once, then you meet them again. Then you go up, then you greet them, where you say, Bakwinakusin. Bakwinakusin means, it's so good to see you again. Now, that's with the pronunciation of the Q, which is the Q. But if I were to spell it with a K and pronounce it Bakwinakusin, then I'm saying, about time you took a shower. <laughs> These days, there are less than 200 fluent speakers remaining in the five Lusta communities. Most of them are elders, raised in the tradition of the Catholic Church. Today, Imelda is in Tobik, two hours north of Fredericton. She's hard at work with elders and others, integrating the Wolastic language into the realm of the Catholic Church. And the priests would reward the people who would become parishioners. There was an English-only policy that when the nuns moved into our community, the government uh, insisted that we speak only English and, and no more of our Wolastic language. The church, residential schools, and government have had a devastating impact on the Wolastic traditions that are the vessels for their language. Many elders now view traditional spirituality as pagan, but things are changing. We're starting to bring our drum in to the church. We're bringing our own medicine rather than the incense. We're even replacing, not replacing, but we're also adding our own unleavened bread, which is our fry bread, as a communion. We ask the priest to start learning our language. <laughs> The, our father, when it was transliterated, when you say kmitaksen um, it's not our father, it's our fathers, our, our ancestral fathers. Imelda and the Wolastic Language Committee have encouraged deeper involvement with more of the elders by translating the rosary. I would come weekly and say the rosary with them, and then they started to ask, invite their children community members, and then so the circle started to grow. And then we've since taken it from the home into the church and asked the priest, we want to say our rosary in our own language now. We don't want to use English. So that's how it became, and of course the priest joined as well. For many elders, 
the role of Mary is now more aligned with Wallastic tradition as a symbol of the clan mother and the female principal. The Hail Mary, Walida has Molly. It's like, I am so happy, Mary. You know, Molly, because we don't use the R, so Molly is Mary. Uh, I am happy, Mary, that uh, you have symbolized uh, the sacredness of women. Because in our culture, we believe that creator is both male and female. That it cannot be just male. It has to be both male and female. And that's equality. <laughs> One of the things that I had learned at the University of Arizona was this apprenticeship program where elders in the community would apprentice a, a language learner and they would come for 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, depending on what this person wants to know. For example, want to learn how to make baskets in the language, I would go to a basket maker. Elder Charles Solomon of King's Clear First Nation is eager to pass on this ancient skill to the next generation and the language and legends that go with it. Elder Charles has been an inspiration to me. He would set up these molds and the class would come in and he would show them and he would tell the legend of the ash tree, you know, how the, the, the Wolastuk people came from the ash tree, the male and the female, and the basket is the weaving. That's why baskets are round because of the cycle and, and so he would tell this whole thing as he was making the basket and he'd be saying it in the language. Talking circles bring the community together in St. Mary's by having the elders get together at the Wallastuk Language Center to speak their language while several generations listen and learn. They talk about me, they talk about you. Yeah, you want to pass it to them so they can take it. Well, and that book, yeah. Today, the elders have a surprise. They are being gifted with prayer bundles prepared earlier in the week by the children. In this way, Imelda is able to forge a link between the children, the language, and the elders who speak it. And it's thank you for saving our language. The power of these simple talking circles touches all who attend. It just makes me so proud to be in this class. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. You know? And it's a good feeling. And uh, to hear everybody and to know that, you know, oh. Students at South Devon Public School in St. Mary's Reserve have been learning the Wallastic language from this remarkable teacher for over 20 years. Christine Salas has always been an inspiration to all of us. The beautiful thing about Christine is she loves each child as if they were hers. And what a beautiful way to learn the language. These are all my students. She was so successful the first year she started teaching that the New Brunswick School Board commissioned a film about her program to serve as an example for schools across Canada. The title was Before It's Too Late. They did it uh, on the second year of the program. 
because they were so impressed with the changes in the children. From day one, they ran to my room and did not want to leave. They'd even sneak from their cla other classrooms to come in. She had done so many uh, little booklets and things already. They get to take these books home once they learn to read them. They can take all these items home once they learn to read them so that they can read to their parents. Hopefully the parents will uh, be enthused about the program and maybe try harder themselves to, to speak the language. These were the things that we needed to have put in schools where teachers could continue on the languages. Her determination comes in part from painful past experiences close to home. My own daughter was strapped in a reserve school for, for speaking our language. And uh, we, were, we were very angry and mad at the time uh, that she was punished uh, with a strap. But, uh, but uh, she called me the day I started the program here at, at South Devon. And she told me, she said, Mom, isn't it like poetic justice that you're there in a provincial school teaching our language when, uh, when I was strapped for that very thing on a reserve? The walls of her schoolroom are filled with the creations made by her students over the past 21 productive years. In the year 2000, we did this. We showed how Indians live in the winter and how they live in the summer right here. And now this is St. Mary's now. These were the first students that I had. Yeah, Rowena, Melissa, Colin, Billy, Joey, Dee Dee, and Tabitha. The kids asked me, why don't, why don't you teach us modern language, modern Indian? I mean, it's, it's a, you're, you're teaching us old Indian. They must think that there's a modern language rather than the old language, you know. But I think there's only the old language. Later this year, Christine Salas plans to retire from teaching. If she retires, she's only retiring from teaching in a classroom. But she'll never retire from teaching because she'll always be a teacher. Wherever they need me, that's where I'll, that's what I'll do. Imelda takes advantage of traditions like the sweat lodge to involve the young ones in the language and spirituality. And it was those inquisitive ones that I felt, I've touched their ancestor. They want to know more. And in each community that I work in, I can sense them. The other ones just aren't ready for me yet. I'm going to go in this way. Remember? Follow your heart. Okay, like this. Okay. Imelda uses many of the basic rituals as she tells traditional Wallustic stories. That just means we're going to thank you for everything. Put it there behind you on Mother Earth. Remember? We're going to tell a story about Matagwas. Meg had Matagwas, before had Matagwas had long ears. Matagwas had teeny, teeny, tiny ears. But Gluskab changed that. Gluskab changed his ears. It was summertime like now, like Nibinil. And Matagwas was bored. Oh, I'm so bored, she says. She said, I think I'll play a trick on all my friends. She went to Dukas. Dukas? Dukas. Asiginagut. Asiginagut. Maya Gizos. Maya Gizos. Gudi. Gudi. Abadjiel. Abadjiel. So Dukis was scared. Dukis said, oh, Gizos, Madagadi Abadjiel, the sun isn't going to shine anymore. Oh, no. What are we going to do? We won't be able to see. It'll be dark. We'll be hungry. We can't find food. And Martha Gwes was hiding because Martha Gwes said, oh, no, Gluskab is here. He doesn't like it when we lie or tell stories or play tricks on our friends. He's going to be mad at me. What is Gluskab going to do to me? So she's hiding. She's scared. Gluskab goes over, looks underneath, and finds Mott the Grass. 
lifts her up by her teeny tiny ears. All of a sudden, her ears stretch and Gluska upset from here on in. You told these pips to your friends. You will have long ears to teach you to listen to your friends and not play tricks on them. And that's how Mata Glass got long ears. Is every time after a story, what do we do? Sing a song. We sing have a song. to sing a song, because that when we sing, we pray twice. Okay, yep. ready? Bye. Ready, Jeek Nux? We're going to sing Yue Haya. Yue Haya. This prayer that Imelda passes on to the children came to her during her first fast. Oh, I gotta give you a hug for that. Love for the language and simple ritual go a long way to reversing language loss. But the key for the younger generation is to involve them as early as possible. You like the language? Yeah. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel good inside and then I'm, that um, when I can save it for other people. It takes dedication and perseverance to preserve a language. For Imelda and her friends, the hard work is more than worth the effort. We're language warriors where we're going to help people love the language so they can love each other. We'd like your comments on our program and any suggestions you might have for future episodes. Just drop us a line or visit our website. Thanks for watching and join us again next week for more language adventures on Finding Our Talk. Mm -hmm.